Well, glory, glory, and uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. This is our Christmas morning service, and we'll be back here at 6 o'clock. If you ain't going to church anywhere, go ahead and come on down at 6 o'clock. Amen. So we're, we're down here at the church, and everybody's here. And go ahead and go. You can sit, sit uh, move some chairs around where more people can get in back there. Yeah, go ahead and sit down there. Sit up here on the stage if you don't mind being on the TV. Well, amen. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you speak to your people through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, we're going to talk about today how to receive all that God has for you, the very best that God has for you, and we're going to find out what is the very best, amen? Those of you that are saved, born again, giving your life to Jesus, well, how many people know you can enter in even to greater, either greater realms with God, supernatural life living? Amen. And so uh, the number one thing, if you're taking notes, you can no longer be a fear of man. Oh, well, I'm not afraid of man. I'm not afraid. Uh, what if you have to leave your religious church? Well, there might be sweet people there, nice people there, kind people there. But what I'm getting ready to share is really what we're supposed to be doing. So if you're a man pleaser, or a woman pleaser, or a grandkids pleaser, or, or whatever else pleaser, uh, then the enemy will use that against you. But if you're going to really dive in and be real with God, let him be real through you in a greater way, he's way beyond religious, he's he's. He's way beyond Jesus in the manger. He's way beyond Jesus on the cross. He's living on the inside of us. Okay, so we're going to go over this right here. Matthew. Matthew chapter 15, verse 30. God gave this to me years ago. I used to be a horse trainer and I had a breeding stable too. This one particular mare was getting ready to have a coat to fold. And uh, I was getting ready to go over to friends of mine's house. And God said, I've been praying, fasting, reading the Bible all day, listening to tapes back then. And uh, the Lord just said, no, just, just pray a little bit more. So I went outside. And the mare was getting ready to have a coat. So I called my mom and dad. I was young enough. I was still living at home. They come outside and they helped me for a little bit and got the coat delivered, got it up, got it cleaned up, got the mama, made sure it was sucking and everything. And I went back in the house, get cleaned up. Lord, I was going to go to my friend's house. The Lord said, no, I said, just pray a little bit more. Kind of like Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Just go a little bit farther, a little bit farther. Well, that's what God's speaking to us today. Go a little bit farther. Go a little bit farther. And uh, so Matthew 15, 30 says, A large crowd came to Jesus, bringing them that were lame, maimed, blind, crippled, and they threw them at Jesus' feet. And he healed them all. Hello? All. Made the blind to see, the cripples to walk. Now look at this here. And the lame, look at that word lame, it also means maimed, made whole. And the Lord showed me, said, uh, you know, I looked up, the, I looked up lame, and I looked up where it said uh, crippled, and I looked up the word maim. There's people that have been in car accidents. They might, they might have been born maim. And God's wanting us to use our supernatural relationship with Him to not just pray for those people that they feel better, but this scripture right here, that they're actually made whole. 
the lame, the maimed are made whole. See? Now, I've only seen one big toe that they was going to cut off. And well, a few legs, too, that they was going to cut off. And uh, spoke to them, prayed with them, taught them a little bit. And they didn't get their legs cut off, and they didn't get their big toe cut off. And uh, matter of fact, the toe, the doctor came in and said, what's going on with that toe? He reached up there and grabbed it, was moving it around <clears throat> on the person. And he said, Doc, he said, I think I got a new toe. He said, something happened. Uh, he was scheduled for surgery. So, but he wasn't really maimed. Uh, I'm talking about what God's talking about, like somebody ain't got no leg. Not just crippled. See, it says crippled, made whole, could walk. But then it goes on to say maimed, lame. Not just someone hobbling. God heals all that too. Uh, someone that don't have no eyeballs. Someone that doesn't have an ear. Someone maybe doesn't have a nose or lips or eyebrows or even part of their head gone. You know, or arm, got an arm amputated or blew up in the war, the leg blew up in the war. And, uh, well, you know, everything that God does is supernatural. Everything. Doesn't matter if you need a, you see, it doesn't matter if you need a headache healed, that's supernatural. Or you need a, you don't have any teeth, and teeth grow back. Uh, doesn't have any shoulder, or you need a new backbone. See, he give you a new backbone, not just heal your back. He can give you a new backbone, straighten it up. See, hips, bones, whatever it is, creative miracles, it doesn't matter. He didn't say there was any certain recipe here. He just said that it's what Jesus did. And people automatically, I know, are saying, well, you know, I'm waiting on Jesus to do it. Well, he's the one that, what do you mean you're waiting on him to do it? Everything that you release your faith on, it's through your faith. He, he back up his word, but you have to use his word and speak his word to get so he can back it up. I mean, when's the last time? Uh, I've never even heard anyone ever even preach or teach this subject of, you know, somebody don't have an arm or don't have a think don't have a thumb and it grows back. I never heard anybody teach on it. Even the Bible says to teach on it. <laughs> I mean, everything in the Bible we're supposed to be teaching on, right? Well, I know, but that's a special time. Well, you're getting born again is a special time, isn't it? That's supernatural. It takes more power for you to get born again than it does for you to get healed. <laughs> you didn't know that? Yeah, Jesus had to get raised from the dead for you to get born again. Well, he also got raised from the dead so you cannot be maimed anymore. You don't have to be maimed. You don't have to have, you know, missing ribs. You don't have to have missing part, parts of your heart, lungs cut off, cut out, living on one kidney, no kidney dialysis. You don't have to. He, he, he give you made whole, it says. See? Give you a new heart, new lungs, new liver, new feet. Well, my legs just hurt all the time. He give you new leg. He give you new nerves, new bones, new CI joints. Well, I wish he'd do it. Well, it don't work but wishing. You have to use faith for this teaching, just like you would for healing or just like you would for salvation or money or getting filled with the Holy Spirit. It's all, it's all faith. But if you never do hear this, then you, will, you won't realize, hey, I'm, I'm, thank you, Lord, I have my arm. Thank you, Lord, I have my hand. Thank you, Lord, I can see. I got, I got brand new eyes. Thank you, Lord, I can hear. I got eardrums now. I don't need to hear an age. I got eardrums. Thank you, Lord, I got a new heart. Thank you, Lord, I got a new foot. I don't just thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I, for the prosthetic leg. And thank God for prosthetic legs, but I'm thanking God for the real leg. Amen. You got real legs. You've been maimed. 
through accident, through violence, left you for dead. Maybe your faith's all, you know, your faith is, your face is all jacked up and, you know, there's a guy, he's maimed, he's born maimed. He just has the trunk of his body, that's all. And, you know, he's under the impression God made him that way. See, no, I can't find that in the Bible. I find this in the Bible where Jesus made him whole, where faith made him whole. Those people brought him there. They would they was probably beggars and everything else. Some people just brought him there. They was all jacked up and sideways. Some of them couldn't hear. When I was in Egypt, I was uh, there during Ramadan, and during Ramadan, they, they think, well, you're supposed to give to the poor, you know, so they're giving big time to the poor, and a lot of beggars are in the city. Uh, this one guy, we just about stepped on him. He had no arms. He had no legs. He was just a trunk. And he looked like he was probably about 40, 50 years old. And he was just, uh, just scooting, you know, just kind of wiggling down the minor, middle thing. And he had like a little box in front of him that he could uh, bump it with his stomach. And it was metal. If he put some money in it, there was probably a handler around there somewhere. You just couldn't see and there were so many people. Um, you know, something like that, his arms and legs grow out and his eyeballs come on and he stands up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, it, there's a movie. Uh, the, the devil's trying to creep this in where people don't do it. I mean, where, where, when, have, when have you ever even heard of somebody even uh, talking about taking authority over the devil in denominational churches? They're praying to God about the devil. But I mean, when's the last time you heard somebody even teach on healing? I'm not saying, oh, God can heal, let me pray for you. I'm not saying that. I'm actually talking about giving you a Bible lesson on healing. I know on here you hear it all the time. People get healed all the time. When's the last time? See? Knowing the gospel, responding to the gospel, and responding to Jesus, that's more power than, than what we're talking about today. I mean, to make someone born again, that's more power. So you, you, you've, got, you've got the powerhouse on the inside of you. But you just have to go along these lines and start studying along these lines. Uh, you know, it's just kind of like if you never did know about healing, you'd just stay sick. And even though you knew God could heal, if you didn't know about faith and how to speak it, then you wouldn't have spoken and you wouldn't have got healed. And even if you got healed through somebody else's anointing by speaking it, you would have lost it because when the first time you had pain, instead of saying, oh, no, not this time, not me, not me, uh-uh, you would have just said, well, I guess it's back. I guess it's back. I guess it didn't work. So you say you got to stop that. Well, just like this, the maimed and the lame, not just the cripples, Oh, they're getting up out of the wheelchairs, praise God. Well, they're getting up out of the wheelchairs. They don't have no arms and legs, and now they do. Somebody said, boy, that sounds far-fetched. Getting born again is far-fetched, too. I mean, you're living like a hell on wheels, and God comes in you, and you ask him to come in. He goes in there, and he changes you, and you know. I mean, you can be acted like a whatever for a long time sometimes, but you know that you've been born again. See, you know that you had that transformation. Well, just like you're hearing this, Romans 10, 9, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. And it wasn't just some of them got healed. It said all were made whole. All were made the blind to see, the cripples to walk, the lame and the maimed were made whole. Back then, you know, leprosy was eating their body. I seen a lady, she didn't have any fingers. She had a little girl. The little girl just loved her mama, but she didn't have any, she had like nubs on the ends of her arms. She, you know, had arms and everything, but at the end where the hand was, it was just eaten off by leprosy, it looked like. 
and you know, her nose was being eaten off, her lips. They couldn't stop it. They didn't know how to stop it. So these lepers, lepers, you know, some of them had wrapped their legs up, wrapped stuff up because they was it was rotten. It was rotten, rottening. And so, what uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about the maimed, made whole. Okay, so let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's, let's go a little bit more here. In Romans thirteen eight, if you got a Bible, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Woo. Everybody say, yay, man, that's right, yay. Well, he's the same Jesus that made him whole. Well, I know that's back in the Bible days. This is the Bible days right now. Prophecies being fulfilled every day. This is the Bible days right now. Like I said, I don't hear anybody teaching on this, so they might say a little bit of something about it, but not actually just give you a teaching on it. This is how you do it. <laughs> well, you have to go in that direction. See? Well, I hope it works. Well, that, that faith people, they know better than say that. See? What would they say? they just say, I have. What would you do? Say on here, you know, you need a finger. Just joke around because you don't you don't you don't have a finger or a thumb or whatever, or do you speak to us and think of Jesus? I have my thumb. Think of I got a brand new thumb. I mean, everybody in the whole place might know you don't have no thumb. What if you get on, you know, all of a sudden, boop, <laughs> you know, or foot? People don't have. I know people don't have no hand or no arm. Their forearm about halfway down got electrocuted. And one time he was in faith about that. Of course, you got to hang around places. You got to hang around like this videos and hang around this. This is a faith place. It's not just a faith place. It's a place that teaches you how to grow in faith, stay in faith, and make you whole. The maimed were made whole. He, and I looked up that word maimed. It also means mutilated. There's people that has been mutilated. They're watching this. Uh, they might have been born mutilated. Uh, you know, they have to use their uh, nose or a brush, uh, a brush with a rubber end on it to push the buttons on a tablet or computer or phone or something. They're mutilated, made whole. And Pastor Mike, I never heard anybody teach on that kind of stuff. I hadn't either. But the Lord showed me this. I was back in my 20s. And every once in a while, as the Lord, as the Lord uh, has me teach on it, I do. And But it's real strong today. It's real strong the last few days. There's people. We're going we're gonna to hear reports and see reports to see it the people that were mutilated left for dead that they don't die psalms 118 verse 17 they live and not die and declare the works of the lord and no god is not getting glory out of your being mutilated or born that way as a tv series i never have watched it on tv but i watch it on my tablet the third series come out, I was like, oh, I was just all excited about it. Everything else was pretty good. Very biblical. But now all of a sudden, they're, the devil got in there. And now it's no longer biblical. It's no longer a faith video. They're, they're, they're saying to the whole world that watches that, millions of people watch it, I, uh, I'm like, surely they're going to change that somewhere. That's nowhere in the Bible. But they were saying that Jesus was talking to a cripple and said, uh, well, this is giving glory to God. 
No, it's not. No. Jesus got mutilated. They said he didn't even look like a human being. So you don't have to be mutilated. So you can be healed of mutilization. See, he took all that on him so you don't have to. People say, well, why don't we see it very much? Because you're not using your faith on it. I mean, when's the last time you spoke to your crooked leg? You broke back. Well, I'm waiting on God to heal me. That, that's not using your faith on it. That's waiting on God to heal you. Faith, there's nowhere, there's nowhere at all that faith, there's no such thing as waiting in faith. No, faith is I have it now before you could see it. Faith don't go by what it sees. Faith goes by what the Word of God says. You're not going to change the Word of God. I mean, these scriptures are the exact same as they was for the last 2,000 years. God is just waiting on someone to use their faith to say, yeah, i got a new eyeball. i got a new whatever it is. you got a new brain. <laughs> Amen. Maybe you have something going on with your brain. Make the brain, the brain tumors have to leave. But you're the one that has to speak. I got a new brain. I don't have a decaying brain. I don't have an old man brain or old woman brain. No. Mm -mm. No. I don't have an Alzheimer's brain. I don't have a dementia brain. I don't have a diabetes brain. No, I, I have a... I had a mind of Christ. The brain, I have a new brain. What is that? That's your brain was being mutilated. See? But it's changed. So let's keep going here. That's uh, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what is your Jesus like? Well, my Jesus, you know, he's real sweet and real nice and Oh, the pastor's real sweet and real nice. And the people at church are real sweet and real nice. Yeah, that real sweet and that real nice will let you die and go to hell, too. That real sweet and real nice pat you on the head and give you the pot luck dinner and all that kind of stuff. They'll bury you, too. No, you got you got you to go past that. Or get somewhere... It's saying, hey, just ask them. Hey, what do you think about this verse of Scripture here about in Matthew 15, 30, where the main were made whole. People didn't have no arms and legs and fingers and toes and elbows and ribs and stuff were gone from them. And gee, they threw them at Jesus' feet and he made them whole. What do you think about that? If they say, well, I don't know. You need to leave that place. <laughs> don't walk, run. See? Somebody in an automobile accident all maimed up. They get a hold of this video. They start speaking to their body. They grow back some fingers and toes and eyes. Burn victim. They grow some new skin. Not just skin. It's covered. You can tell it's burned. They smell like they're burnt. No. They're healed. New skin, not just skin, not just grafted skin, but new skin, a whole new body of skin, and whatever else, even their hair grew back right. Amen. See? But you got to hang around a place like that. They're, they're not, every church don't believe like that. Every church is not a faith church. Even some faith churches and some faith preachers, I ask, I've talked to them about this. And they're like, well, you know, I don't see that. That's the same devil that was back then as the same devils now. What are you doing trying to see it? You're supposed to be using your faith. See? You believe people get born again? Oh, yeah, we believe they get born again. Any people believe anybody can get born again. But what about that crippled person in that wheelchair? Half side of their body's messed up. 
What about them? Well, I believe God do it if He wants to. Now, wait a minute. Would you pray with someone to get born again to come up front? Pastor, I want to... I want to get saved today. Well, okay. Well, Lord, if it's your will, let them get saved. If not, let them die and go to hell. Well, no, nobody with any sense wouldn't say that. But you do it all the time with cripples. You do it all the time with maimed people. Oh, it took an act of God to do that. It took an act of God to get saved. Well, that's different. No, it did the exact same faith. It's the exact same thing. You just have to go in that direction. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is your Jesus like? Maybe you need to change your Jesus to the Jesus that we read there in Matthew 15th chapter, verse 30. See, you speak the Word, He confirms it. But if you're not speaking the Word in that direction, how's He going to confirm it? You got to use your faith in that area. Matthew 15, 30. Maimed, made up. Well, I think it's like this. God don't ask you what you think. You don't care how religious you're acting. You got a backwards collar on and everything else, pray in a box and put dimes in a box. I don't know what they put in there now. Say how many of this and how many of that and all that. Uh-uh. No. The main, the main hope. The cripples walk. The blind see. The lamed. People that have been mutilated right in front of your eyes. Just everything click out. Jesus is the same. Oh, that's all up to Jesus. No, he's waiting on you. It's your faith. It's your faith. It's your faith. Matthew 13, 8. You have great things in your life. You have, you have to decide to have great things in your life, not somebody else's, yours. You have to see Jesus has already decided. My Jesus is the Jesus of the Bible. My Jesus is the Jesus of the Bible. Matthew 15, 8, that's our Jesus. Not the Jesus of religion, or of history. I believe Jesus was a good person and he did a lot of great things when he was alive here on the earth. But you know, everything's different now. No, you didn't change. You're bogged down with religiosity and history lessons of Jesus. No, we're talking about a real living Jesus that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But you got to go in that direction. Everything God does is impossible. This isn't any different to have an arm grow out or a leg grow out. Or I was watching a guy on the internet, but 15, 20 people in there that their backs got adjusted. He was praying for them. It's just, just as easy for God to give them a new back. It's just as easy for them to lift their hands up to praise God, and then the other, and a hand just pops out, our fingers. But you got to put your faith on it. Everything God does is impossible. You have to hook up with the impossible of God. The God of the impossibilities. He turns the impossible into possible. And then the impossible into reality. The God of the Bible. With your faith through Jesus in His Word. That's how you got to, you got to go in that direction. Ephesians 3.20 is available to you now, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You are doing, what are you doing with it? What is Ephesians 3.20? More than you can think, dream, or imagine. According to the power, guidelines to the power that works in you. Let this power that you're hearing today, this teaching today, let it go in you. See? Don't reject it. Oh, I believe God can do that sometimes if He wants to. You're actually rejecting the Word of God when you talk goofy like that. Well, in God's timing, His timing's always now. You're talking goofy again. Well, I believe when God sees fit, talking goofy again. You'd never say that about salvation. 
If you are, then your mind never has been renewed by the Word of God. You've got to get in it. See, if someone's talking is wrong, then their believing is going to be wrong. And if their believing is wrong, they'll never have that work in their life. It's a sure sign they just don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. So what's the cure for it? Get in it. <laughs> get into that Scripture, Matthew 15, 30. More than you can think, dream, or imagine, according to the power that works in you. Are you meeting the qualifications to see the impossible? Are you hooking up with the impossible? It's your decision. God just not going to drop it on you. And, oh, well, there it is. No, 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 no. you got to be in the direction of God. It don't just fall on you like ripe cherries off a tree. God already decided to give you the impossible. You are living in the impossible realm right now. So look around. Oh, you hear all these people and has these visions going to heaven and they said, there's a leg and there's an eye and these are all these extra parts up here. We don't need them in heaven. We need them here. We got to have them here on earth waiting on someone to receive. It's here on earth. It's here on earth. Impossible realm. Or are you just living in the five senses realm? That's not pleasing to God though. It's impossible to please God without faith. Hebrews 11.6 Romans 14.23 says just live by your five senses or is a sin. Everybody want to talk about drinking, smoking, and cussing is a sin. Yeah, all those things are definitely not good. But if you don't use faith, it's a sin. Hook up with your faith. God's Word. That's where it's at. And where we read and we hear God's Word today, you have to decide, I believe, I receive now. you got to receive this message. It's, oh, wasn't that wonderful? He's talking about maim. I hope we see that someday. You're actually rejecting what's being said when you talk like that. No. So I have that. I got my arm. I got my leg. I got my rib. You know, some of you have had children that's born just all jacked up. It's all messed up. you got to start speaking faith over them. Oh, they're so sweet. They're always going to be a little baby. Just so sweet. Oh, they're so sweet. God had them like that. No, He didn't. He's looking for someone to have faith like that. The devil perverts it. You have to speak faith. Amen. Amen. How do you do it? How do you do all that? How do you get it to work? That we read. That we just read all that. How do you get that to work? Matthew 15, 30. How do you get it to work? It's a good question. What we read, we have to decide to believe the impossible. Nothing is impossible to them that believe. Nothing is impossible to them that believed. It's not up to God. Nothing is impossible to them that believe. Not to God. If you're waiting on God to do it, He's waiting on you to put your faith on it so He can do it through you. But it don't, it's not just God acting by Himself. We are the them. <laughs> we are the them. Mark 9, chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto them, If thou believest, nothing is impossible. All things are possible to him that believeth. We, believe, we, are, we have to believe and say. We have to believe and say. What are we believing? I believe God can do that. That's not faith. Faith would say, I have it. 
I have my arm, I have my leg, I have my fingers. My kid's back is healed. You know, they can understand me. They may be in a coma. They're awake in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for miracles. They're awake in Jesus' name. See? Speak it right on them. Goes in them. They wake up. That's a miracle. They was brain dead. Now they got a new brain. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. This is how you get it all started in the right direction. In keeping with what is written. See, we're not going beyond some place that's not written. Everything that I'm saying is written in the Bible. Keeping with what is written. Are you keeping with what is written or are you saying your own goofy stuff? Spiritual junk that's not even in the Bible. And you wonder why you don't get no results. You got to get Bible results. You got to see what the Bible says. And in keeping with what is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. What do you do? Believe, speak. What I believe, therefore I speak. I believe and speak. See that? Let's read one more time before we pray. Receiving God's blessed. Receiving God's best. It's up to you. God's already planned to give it to you. He's just looking for someone to use some faith in that area. Matthew 15, 30. You notice here what happens. Large crowds, not a large crowd, large crowd, crowds. We've had people see visions down here numerous times, more than I remember how many there is, counting. Large crowds of people. Not just a crowd, not a one-time thing, but crowds came to Jesus, bringing the lame, the main, the blind, the cripples. They threw them at Jesus' feet, and he healed them all. Made the blind to see, the cripples to walk, and the maimed and the lamed made whole. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We release faith right through these airways right now that this will stir the people to believe for their new arms, fingers, toes, brain cells, neck. neck, the fuse there in their neck is freed up. New neck bones, legs, in Jesus' name. I'm reminded of a young man. I picked him up, brought him down here. We started years ago in Dewar. Started praying for that city, meeting there every Wednesday night. It was all single people. Some of them got married to each other along the way. But we had one guy, he was coming, he was in a wheelchair. I went and got him. Put him in the wheelchair, rode him out to the car, put him in the car. Uh, he's still in the wheelchair, put him back in the wheelchair, and put him back in the house. In the house where he's having Bible study. They had to hold the door, get him over the threshold, move some chairs around and have him in there. He was in the wheelchair. He couldn't walk. And I was preaching along those lines, speaking along those lines. And he said, well, I've got to go to the bathroom. So I wheeled him in the bathroom, and he was in the bathroom, and kind of forgot about him, just left him in the bathroom, went back in there and started preaching. The whole room was full of people. And, well, while I was helping him, you know, stand up or go to the bathroom, and I was sitting back down in the chair, he's going to wash his hands, well, when I touched him, he said something went through his back. And uh, he came walking from the bathroom back into the living room. Never used his wheelchair again. He's still walking today. See, that was years ago. What happened? He was maimed 
He had all of his arms, fingers, and toes and everything. I should say lame. He was lame and crippled that he got healed. And he said uh, they x-rayed him and they couldn't figure out why he was able to bend his legs and stuff because he had steel rods in there. I'm not a doctor. I don't know, but I know Dr. Jesus. And we know we use some faith. He's still whole today. See? Well, the same God, it's just as easy for God to put a new leg or new bone in your body, a new foot, new back, whatever it is, no matter what it is. It's just as easy for Him. He says, yeah, see, see, Pastor Mike, it's easy for Him. Yeah, but He don't move on His own. He don't initiate it on His own. He had to be in the right environment. That's why I say get out of get get away from people that don't believe stuff like that. They don't believe in the say so get away from it. You know, especially if they call themselves men and women of God and you know, saved and spirit filled and all that kind of stuff. I've heard I've even seen healing evangelists and healing it's well, I never seen anything like that before. It's because you gotta use your faith on it. You had to use your faith on getting born again. You had to use your faith on getting spirit filled, speaking in tongues. You had to use your faith on getting healed, set free, and delivered. You had to use your faith on the maimed being made whole. You got to use your faith. See? On God's best. That's God's best. But you got to come up. You got to. He, he's not going to come down where you are. You got to come up to, come up in your freshness of your faith. See, like it says in Corinthians, you don't have shipwreck faith. So there's people that get to certain levels of faith, and then they decide, Am I going to go on into this level of faith too? All your goofy friends already think you're crazy anyway. You might as well be crazy for Jesus even more. You're amongst us. <laughs> you might as well launch out and start talking to your fingers and your toes and your elbows. Oh, that's crazy. They thought Jesus was crazy. They're going to think you're crazy. They already think it anyway. You might as well go ahead and uh, let some crippled babies live. Let some retarded people get the right chromosome and their face, facial fixtures, brain, everything. They can go back to regular school. Might as well. See? But you're the one. You're the determining factor. Not God. He's already decided Matthew 15, 30 is in the Bible for you. Not the devil. Because he can't deceive you no more. Because you got the truth on it. You're the determining factor. See, we've had babies that were supposed to be dead or alive. We had babies that were supposed to be blind, they see. Babies that didn't, you know, that wasn't even supposed to live through the night, live. People that were supposed to die didn't die. People in comas, you know. We might as well have some people that don't have no arms, no legs. They grow out. Well, if Jesus wants to do it, He will. Well, who do you think's doing all this anyway? But He's doing it through His body. He's doing it through getting teaching like this and developing your faith in this area too. It don't just happen. No. Did you just wake up one day and you was born again? No, you had to use your faith, hear the gospel, receive, respond, a positive note, confess Jesus as Lord. See that? Did you just wake up one day and wow, I got all the revelation in the Bible? No, you have to, you have to apply yourself. Nobody has all the revelation in the Bible. I've had people in their 80s, 90s, even one in a hundred teaching along these lines. They said, I've been to church longer than you've been born, young man, and I've never, ever even heard of a preacher preach on that. I said, well, it's in the Bible. God showed me that 
Matthew 15, 30 years ago, I read that and I go, wow. I looked up those words. I looked them up again last night, this morning, as I was preparing to come down here. And, uh, yeah, mutilated. Mutilated. Somebody took an axe and just chopped up everything, you know, on a human, on a body. And they grew back. Why not? Why not? Why not? I remember one time I was sitting in a church, and big church, big Pentecostal church. They said they believe God do anything. And the pastor was talking about balance, balance, balance. You should be balanced in your prayer, balancing this, balancing that, balancing what you believe in God. Well, you can be. That's just natural human thinking balance too. It was actually an enemy against God. And he said there was a pastor and he was they were celebrating his so many years of the ministry and and they was, you know, he was in a wheelchair and he had a big heavy blanket over his legs. And he said a young visiting uh evangelist come up wild-eyed and bushy-tailed. And uh, he said, how many people believe that God can do anything? Well, all of them shouted, yes. So he turned to the pastor. Now, he didn't know that the pastor, he, he, he knew that was the pastor, and he was in a wheelchair. He said, get up and walk. And the pastor just looked at him. He said, I said, get up and walk. He just looked at him. He went over there and pulled the heavy blanket off of his legs. He didn't have any legs. Well, that kind of put a squelch on the service. But I dare to say if they had this teaching today, hello, if they had this teaching today, that wouldn't even, they wouldn't even have batted their eye at it. They'd have said, legs, grow out in Jesus' name. Hello? Pastor Mike, I see people on here clicking on here. <laughs> oh! They said, you done went off the deep end. I hope so. I hope I went so far off on the deep end that I'm believing my God is the God of the Bible. If he can part the Red Sea, brother and sister, and keep all the fish still in there, and let him walk across on dry ground, they had to respond. You know, he didn't do nothing until Moses d stuck the rod in there. God don't do nothing till you speak faith. He'll let everything rot and go to hell. Why? Because you're the one supposed to be speaking life. Why won't God just do it by himself? He's called us to develop in faith. He's a faith God. You have to speak faith in order for it to work. Then you can't go by what you see. You just got to start thanking God that you got a leg. That should be your prayer. Thank you, Lord, I got new legs. Thank you, Lord, I got new knees. We had a guy right here in church. We had pews back then. A guy in the back, he came down here to film the service. We had some special services. And he walked down here and he said, I got to have knee surgery on my legs, my knees, but I believe God. This was before the church even started. He was just kind of setting up stuff. And he came down here and I just spoke to his knees. I just said, knees be brand new knees, new kneecaps, knee joints, everything. I said, thank you, Lord. Start thanking God that you have two brand new knees. Thank God you got two brand new knees. He started thinking, God, I got two brand new knees. No big thing. He seemingly kind of hobbled off. The next day, I was downtown, and he was riding a bicycle. <laughs> Glory to God. He was riding a bicycle and praising God. He was an older man, too. He wasn't no young, rispy crispy. He was a young guy. I mean, he was an older guy riding a bicycle. 
He pulled over there, stopped. He's just rejoicing. Oh, I can ride a bicycle. Hallelujah. He's walking on the walking trail. Hallelujah. He's having a great time. See? And as long as he thanked God that he had two brand new knees, he did good. When you quit thanking God that they're healed, saved, set free, and delivered, it ain't going to do too good. Why? Because you're disconnecting from your faith. You're, think, you're not thanking God they're going to be healed or they're going to be saved or they're going to have an arm or you're going to have a leg, you're going to have a new back, you're going to have the money. No, 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 no. You missed the whole point if you got that out of there. Throw that out. No, I have. I thank you, Jesus. I have a new arm. I have a new eye. Thank you, Lord. I can see. Thank you, Lord. I have a new back. I have a new body. Thank you, Lord, I got new kidneys. Thank you, Lord, them demon kids, they're, 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 they're free from the demons. And them dope devils are, 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 are gone from them. Then my family, that Jesus is their Lord. Jesus is their Lord. Call them by name. What are you doing? You're giving God permission. To do something. God has to. He God do anything he wants to. No, he can't. He can't make you pay tithes. No. He can't make you do nothing. He can't make nothing happen. He can't make you do nothing. You're the one that has to speak it into existence. You. He backs up what you say. As long as it's with the word of God. There's no word the Bible says he's going to do nothing. No. Faith is now. Hebrews 11, 1. What kind of faith? Now faith. Are you talking now faith? You're talking next week faith. I mean, when do you want it? Well, you know, like one guy, I was up in Coolidge, Arizona preaching for about 10 days. It's one lady, she came there for service. Came, she didn't go to church here. We had it all over different places in that town. And she came there for service. She, and she said, I want to believe God for a tablet. I told her the whole story of how I got blessed with tablets. And she said, I don't believe God for a tablet. So I said, when, we, when are you going to receive it? She said, uh, tomorrow. I said, well, there's no reason to pray then. There's no such thing as tomorrow faith. Faith spoke in present tense. Tomorrow never comes. Because tomorrow... When you wake up, it'll be the next day and the next day and the next day and tomorrow never is here. See? So what do you got to do? And everybody in the room, they said, no, it's now. <laughs> I said, wow, they got it. She looked at him and went, what? She's like, you have to speak it that you have it now. She said, well, I can't see it. And he said, where have you been the last 10 services? Go back and look at your notes. See, you preach, you preach faith every night and every day, twice a day, sometimes, every day. People still don't get it. Why? Because their brain is denominational brain, an old religious teaching brain. Religious and denominational teaching brain can't handle this teaching. They're afraid they're going to get fired. They might get fired to start preaching along. Oh, as long as they preach, oh, God wants to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll stay on the payroll. When you start saying, no, I have it. I have my new hand. I have my new whatever it is on your body. Believe God for a new car. Believe God for clothes. Believe God for food. Believe God for the gas prices to go down. Well, you can believe God for new hands, fingers, toes, eyes, neck bone, back bone, hip bone, tail bone, leg bone, and new everything else too. It's the same faith. This isn't hard stuff. This is easy. It's the same faith. He's got to go in that direction. Don't be intimidated by somebody that only has half of a head. You're not intimidated by people who seemingly don't have a brain. I'm not trying to be funny, but some people you wonder. And so you're not intimidated by that, so don't be intimidated. Teach them. They don't have no shoulder. Teach them how to get a new one. 
And you got to knock out that goofy stuff. They make movies about it and everything else. Like I said, I had to quit watching one movie. I mean, the series was so good. Oh, it was about Jesus. It was wonderful. But when they started saying, God going to leave you crippled because it gives glory to God and other people going to give glory to God because they're going to see God that you're still serving God and you're crippled. No. Uh, that was the end of my watching the series unless they repent and change. No. And then they said, now this isn't in the Bible, but it makes a good story plot. Yeah, you've been applauded all right. You stepped right in the middle of the mess of the trap of the enemy. Because a lot of people watching that and they don't know any better. So they believe that they're giving glory to God through being crippled or blind or being born with birth defects. No. No. Thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Anything bad is of the devil. Anything good is of God. So what do you do? You have to quit that nonsense and go by what the Scriptures say. We read them today. Speak along those lines. Talk along those lines. You'll develop in faith along those lines. See, if someone's talking is wrong, their believing is wrong. If their believing is wrong, their talking is wrong. If their talking is wrong and their believing is wrong, that means their mind has never been renewed. They don't know what this book says. They don't know what it says. They don't know how to work it. They don't know how to do it. So they don't do it. They don't go in the direct. They never taught. See, if, if you're, I, I, I'm not, I mean, I know a family. They're wonderful people. If, if you was to look, you'd think that, well, that's a faith church. And they do teach on faith, but they never do teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, people speaking in tongues. They're not against it, but you never hear them teach on it. No one ever gets filled or they don't pray with people. Call them up front to get filled with the Holy Spirit. They'll pray as a group that you get healed. But they don't know anything about this. Oh, they might know what's in the Bible, but they won't, you know, oh, no, I can't go. You know, we've got important people in here. We don't want, to, want them to think we're crazy. Doing the Bible is not crazy, brother and sister. See, it's praising God. Your hand pop out, your arm pop out, your leg pop out, pain leave. Have you ever been praising God in your in your foot or your ankle, or your leg or your elbow or neck? Just the pain just left. Well, you can be praising God and having your faith on Matthew 8 30. And your leg just get a new one. That your wounded warrior friend is no longer they're just come in, just no longer sitting in the chair, no longer on the stretcher. No longer on life support. No longer maimed. You just might as well call hospice because they're maimed. They'll never get any better. Jesus. 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 Matthew 15, 30. It's for today. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus saying yesterday and the day forever. Mark 16, 19 and 20, but you're the one that has to speak the word so he can perform it. He's the performer. You're just the hearer and the speaker of the word. He performs it. Same God that got you born again. Same God that got you spirit filled. Same God. Same God. Same God. But you got to use your faith in that area and develop in that area. Amen. Be at peace today. Amen. Amen. What a birthday present for the whole world. Have a new back. Have new hips. Amen. Have new joy. Ah, oh, learn to laugh at that stub. Ha, ha, ha. I got a brand new arm. I got a brand new back. I got a brand new whatever it is. Amen. Be at peace. Develop. 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 Develop in this area. 
Amen. See, whatever you hear along these lines is what you're going to see along these lines too. Because the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 16 and 17. Pray that every day. You'll start seeing what's in, really in the Bible. It's according to the power that works on the inside of you. Ephesians 3.20. More than you can think, dream, or imagine is available to you. That's more than you can think, dream, or imagine. But start imagining. Start thinking in that direction. Start looking at scriptures in that direction. Start going in that direction. Matthew 15, 30 is yours too. Just like any other scripture. It's yours too. Maimed, lamed, made whole. Mutilated, made whole. Perfectly whole. Ah, oh, yeah. God bless. Have a great one. Merry Christmas.